Well, what is going on, YouTube? It's William Lee, the Meg Catcher, and here you guys today, bringing you week five of our UPU Pokemon League. And as you notice, we got a fancy layout. We got the team on the layout for you. And we got my ugly ass face. Oh, did not mean to swear. Ugly butt face up here in the corner, chilling like a villain, A. Eh? But, um, yeah, we're chilling here. We got this lovely layout courtesy of Itch Shadow Link. Great graphic designer. He'll never admit it, but he is great. And um, this is going to be our layouts from now on. We'll have the team here. We'll have everything. And we'll try to do these all nice and official unless I'm really in a bad mood. So if you guys do enjoy the League Battles here, don't forget to hit that like button. Comment and comment if you so choose. And, of course, subscribe if you are new here to not miss out on any lovely, lovely content. But without further ado, our Week 5 battle is against Andrew Coach of the... Oh, no, this is David, I believe. It's one of the two. Um, Coach of... I don't remember his team name, but I he doesn't have a YouTube channel, so there's nothing for me to link. That's all I know. Um, so as you see on the layout, we brought um, pretty much his team. Um, I could go and find the dock and list all 11 mons. This is exactly what I expected him to bring outside of the Crobat. Uh, I believe instead of Crobat, I was thinking he'd bring some other poison type he had. I think he had like a uh, Skun Tank or something. I don't know. But um, there was, but pretty much this is what I was expecting. So we got lucky in that regard. But we ourselves brought Levani, Metaga, Metagross, Cryogonal, Snorlax, Florgus, and Rotom Fan. All with some lovely, lovely sets. So without further ado, let's get into the replay, and I'm going to start trying to do these live. I'm going to start trying. Uh, we lead off with the Rotom carry, because we're running the same set as last time, I believe, with the trick. Um, so I'm really hoping to get a trick off on something, and the way I saw it by with my lead, um, there was really no lead I could predict on his end with no hazards or anything, so... My best bet was to just go into that and just trick right away, get an item onto something. But, unfortunately, I am an idiot, and I decided to try to trick a Z-Move user. However, that does tell us the Z-Move, so we are able to play around that. Oh, wait, it actually shows up. <laughs> See, on my show... Because here's the thing. I didn't make the names. I actually had one of my friends make the names. And on Showdown, the um, eggplant emojis for me were just boxes. And he then told me later they were eggplant emojis. So I didn't think I had to worry about it, but... Yeah, eggplant emojis. So, but so basically in this turn we do decide to go to Snorlax as he is the special wall of the team and we do live Thunderbolts rather well. Um, he swaps out using U-turn, goes into the Hoopa, which obviously gets us straight into Mommy because we're like, why the heck, why not? Because we can X scissor away on this thing and then from there we can set up sticky webs, uh, predicting a swap, and I'm pretty sure that's exactly what we did. Oh, oh no, we did X scissor. Hmm. I thought we set up sticky webs. See, I don't remember the replays, unfortunately. Uh, Ghost with a Sludge Bomb, which we did predict, luckily. We do get our Mega off right then and there. But he Heat Waves, which actually catches us off guard. But Meteor Mash does manage to kill. And we get that attack increase, which is always nice and helpful. However, Tapu Koko comes in, which does outspeed us. So we have to swap out. Otherwise, I would have stayed in. But unfortunately, it does outspeed. And Bullet Punch does not Oko at plus one. Uh, so we go into Rotom to sack it off because we figure we're not getting the trick off on anything. Uh, we then go into Florgus because with its special bulk, we can lift Thunderbolts. And then he goes into Envy, which kind of caught me off guard. I don't know why he went to Envy. I mean, because we were running Calyx, he couldn't have done a lot to us, but then reveals Will-O-Wisp, which is kind of odd. Um, I swap out immediately, go into Mommy, because I'm okay with this thing getting Will-O-Wisp right now. And this does prove that and he swaps, obviously, so we're able to get our webs up, which is all nice and pretty. Now, I want it to be known. There's probably a lot of you who realize something at this point with the Will-O-Wisp on the Entei. At this point, we could have swept with a with our Florigus outside of the potential gunk shot on the Hoopa. Just keep that in mind. So he does U-turn to kill Mommy after the webs are up. Goes right into Lat Latino, the Latios. Uh, just Mega Evolves on a whim. I Ice Beam, which does an immense amount of damage. But he Dragon Dances, which is pretty much a choke on his end, uh, since we were Sash. But he, but he saves it, swaps out. We Ice Beam this thing. 
do 12%, which we expected to do a little bit less, but he was actually bulky in day, which kind of caught me off guard. But there's the bulldoze to try to lower my speed. Uh, but flowers can pretty much eat anything up. And fun fact about this Entei is um, it was actually an illegal set. Um, unfortunately, most of our battles, any league battles we do are in custom game just because there are a few megas that are not released yet that some people use. It's just what happens. So, um, and he brought an illegal Entei because, as you saw, he just used Sacred Fire. That is only available on shiny Entei's. I wasn't thinking Sacred Fire. I thought he had Flare Blitz. And that's the whole reason I was okay with leaving Florgus in. As soon as I saw the Sacred Fire, did call him out on it. And um, it was offered to replay the battle, but I just said no because I was like, okay, whatever. Just do what you need to do. Uh, he continues to Sacred Fire. I decided to try to do some Calm Mind shenanigans. Wish, uh, wish Calm Mind, Aromatherapy, and Moonblast. He goes into Latino, which is a very odd play on his end, but... I do just, he goes for the Zen Headbutt, actually that was his play, but luckily I don't get flinched, so he dies right then and there. So we got a nice 4v4 going, that Hoopa is still scaring me, and he brings in the Hoopa, so I immediately think he's gunk-shotting me, so I get out. Um, going to Cryogonal, where he Zen Headbutts, crazily enough. Um, at this point we did decide to sack Cryogonal, just because I didn't think I needed it. Um, but then he goes for Drain Punch. Does all that fun stuff, and Cryogonal goes down. Now our four-slot toaster comes in because he can pretty much do damage to anything on this team. Um, outside of this, which is a scary thing. Now, this is actually a misplay on my end. Um, if you did not know, most of these battles I do, I'm sitting in a call with my good friend Danny. He helps me run calcs. He helps me reassure and figure out the best move to do. I did not wait for the calcs to be done. I saw the damage of 43.4, and I was like, okay, Metagross should kill, because I was at plus one, and I didn't take into fact he had leftovers. If he did not have leftovers, as you see, he would have died. However, I did not take that into account like an idiot, and he proceeds to Earth Power and blow our Mega Metagross into the ground. So now we have a 4v2. Things are looking kind of desperate. We still have our Snorlax, which gets the Snorlium Z. No, it's not Snorlium Z. Z Happy Hour, which gets one plus one in every single stat, which does help us out. But he just decides to shore up, which kind of questioned it. But I just crunch. Somehow does not kill him, but we do get the defense drop, and he goes for Toxic. The one week I don't run immunity, he goes for Toxic. Rip me. But so we still do have this Snorlax, and I'm not done with Snorlax just yet. I'm not trying to let him die or anything. Uh, I do believe the Entei still outspeeds us. Nope. Oh, and this was another thing. He had Protect on Entei, which was very odd for him to do, but I just, uh, he goes for Bulldoze to lower my speed. I go for Earthquake. Doesn't know Koem, unfortunately. Now, I do predict the Protect here, and I decide that Snorlax is still of use to us as fodder, so I go into Flowers or Florgus. Um, and pretty much we're at the point where we know this Entei set, and he goes immediately into Coco, which I was expecting a Z-move immediately just to destroy us. And I'm really worried he goes for the Z-move. Luckily enough, it was Twinkle Tackle. This entire time, me and Danny were sitting and calking on a... What was it called? We were calking in the event of... What's the electric Z-move called? I don't even know what it's called. We were calculating in the event of a Thunderbolt, pretty much. That's what we were expecting. But he goes for the Twinkle Tackle, which we do resist. So that's pretty much where it just kind of turned the tide on himself, um, which is really weird. Then he goes into the Hoopa. And so I wish immediately. And now this is the riskiest play of all because we still don't know if there's Gunk Shot or not. I decide to stay in and call him on because if he has Gunk Shot, he's won the game. There's nothing I can do. Does not have Gunk Shot. This entire battle, we were worried about Gunk Shot, and he does not have it. So we would have been free after the Crobat's death to just sit and calm mind away and win the battle. However, we did not do that. We And luckily, because of how low Snorlax was able to get Entei, Moonblast does knock, or well, it brings it close enough to knock out. And which we're fine with at this point. And so we could have swept with Florgus a lot earlier. That was just us being scared of ourselves pretty much. But goes into the Coco, already revealing the Z-move. It's pretty much his last effort at this point with the Thunderbolts. However, with that plus one special defense, we are eating it up. We do decide to go for the Wish just to be safe. But at this point, I do believe we just start Moonblasting away. 
And look at that, does a amazing smack ton of damage. Goes for the Thunderbolt again, gets the crit, but luckily we do not get parried, and Florgus is able to pull through for us. So, your boy has won with a 2-0. Florgus could have swept so long ago, but we were scared of a gunk shot. We were so scared of a gunk shot. So I hope you guys did enjoy this week of battling. If you did, make sure that like button down below, comment a comment if you so choose, and of course subscribe if you are new. Um, since Andrew does not have a channel to Link or David or whoever I fought, I don't unfortunately remember. It was it was a friend of Macaulay's, that's all I know, Militia P2. Um, down in the description will be a link to Shadow Link's channel because he's the one who made this amazing layout for us, so go show him some love in case you don't know who he is. He does some Pokemon content too and some other stuff. I think he did Breath of the Wild, I'm not sure. But, um... Your boy main Malamars. They're trying to come back. We're season two champions trying to make our comeback game. Anyway, I've rumbled on long enough. This is going to be the Meg Cacturn signing out.